Gazim Nizio Cole, and it has been six months since Google Stadia was released. Initially, there was some pretty negative feedback about the service, and that actually deterred a lot of people from trying it out. So today, I wanted to make a video talking about some of the differences between then and now, and ask the question, is it worth it? So first off, I want to talk about the input lag. For reference, I have on average 15 millisecond ping. When Stadia was first launched, the input lag was barely noticeable. It was still there, but it wasn't a hindrance to the experience but now it's completely non-existent. Something that I used to experience a lot at launch were the little visual glitches and compression artifacts. Don't get them as much anymore, but they still pop up from time to time. One of the main complaints of Stadia at launch was the fairly limited games library, but in the last six months, Google has added a lot more games with a bunch more announced including Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Only AAA games that were missing are Fortnite and Minecraft, which I can't imagine are too far off. As far as mobile goes, when it was first launched, it was only available for Pixel devices. But now the list of supported devices has expanded to include Samsung, OnePlus, and even the Razer and ROG gaming phone. From my experience, I would say that the input lag for mobile on a Galaxy S10e using the Stadia controller wired was pretty noticeable, and the visual quality was also pretty diminished compared to using it on Chrome or a Chromecast. Now this could be different for other people, but this is just my experience when it comes to Stadia on mobile. talk about Stadia without talking about the controller. And while a controller definitely isn't necessary as Stadia supports various different control methods from different brands and even dating back to the Xbox 360 controller, having the Stadia controller really completes the experience. Also the Stadia controller is the only controller supported if you're going to be playing on a Chromecast. As a native Xbox controller, I was a bit hesitant once I saw that the analog sticks would be positioned closer to the way the PS4 controller is, but in reality it's sort of a mix of both of the controllers and it feels really natural. When I'm playing I don't find myself having to put my thumbs in an uncomfortable position and it fits really nicely, especially for someone with bigger hands. Also it charges via USB-C, which is a nice bonus considering products in 2020 are still being produced with micro USB. So the ninth generation consoles are coming out later this year, and yes, I would consider Stadia a ninth generation console service thing. I mean, pretty much everyone and their grandma's got a game streaming service these days. I think it's really dope for about $10 a month, you can get a bunch of games, and it also includes a bunch of free games. And I believe right now during the pandemic, Google Stadia is free for two months as well, so that's really cool. And these aren't small random indie games either. These are games that I would actually play. Only downside obviously being if you lose your internet, you lose your games, but isn't that the direction the gaming industry is going in general and has been going in for a while? But one of the things I like the most about Stadia is the convenience factor. The fact that you can just go to a website and play whatever game you want, especially if your computer is occupied and you wouldn't normally be able to play in that situation. Playing a graphics heavy game while rendering a video or having another resource intensive application open was quite literally impossible before Stadia and now it feels great to just be able to pick up a controller and play. Honestly, I think that's my favorite part about it. I can play pretty much anywhere in the house because I have my Chromecast. And just being able to go from nothing to playing Rise of the Tomb Raider in 30 seconds, I think that's an unbeatable experience. Especially compared to PC, because you know, you gotta open Steam, and then if there's an update, it's gonna update Steam. And generally what I found is it takes longer to launch games from Steam or Epic or Blizzard or wherever than it does for Stadia. But I'm just one person, so I decided to ask the r slash Stadia subreddit a few things that have changed for them. And the general consensus has been that we are happy that Google has been and is continuing to add more AAA games to the platform since launch, supporting more phones with more ways to play with different control options and combinations, whether you're playing on a phone, Chromecast, or the web browser. And a reduction in price with the option to upgrade to Stadia Pro makes Stadia a great platform for a lot of different people. 
Only limiting factor being your internet connection, so I say if you can handle it, then I definitely recommend Google Stadia. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and it's been Cole. Peace.